right guys welcome back it's a, a dreary sunday uh cold it's only it's not even 30 so the ground is nice and frozen now we finally had enough frosts that uh it's frozen solid now uh t like i said today's sunday we're not doing anything in the fields uh upcoming week monday i have to go to the fsa office i got to get that stuff taken care of that i did not get done yet so we have that uh tuesday the accountant's coming but in between those two things i have going i want to uh, work in uh starting to push the brush uh uh, out of some of these uh, fence lines along this field it's really bad there's a lot of uh, obnoxious uh, brush and uh, multi-flower rows that kind of stuff so now that the ground is solid there's no the mud is not uh, wet at all i can get in i want to get the 395 going and uh, start pushing so that's uh, kind of where we're going to start uh, on monday all right, so the main that's not the main theme of this video. Uh, today I'd like to talk a little bit about why I don't have any cattle yet. Um, I know I've been talking about this now for two years and really haven't made any type of strides to get any type of cattle. <laughs> so I want to explain that a little bit so some of you guys understand. Um, thank you for all the nice comments on my 5,000 subscriber video. I really appreciate it. Um, makes me feel good. <laughs> so anyway, let's get into uh, why I still haven't done anything with any type of cattle here. All right, so it's kind of simple. It all comes down to money. It's nothing, uh, nothing really uh, <laughs> hard to figure out uh, money. And uh, it's not so much buying the steers. Steers are fairly cheap. I can get my hands on them. I already called and talked to some guys uh, about picking up some steers. Uh, I've made that uh, effort. Uh, the trouble for me is being a renter and a tenant. There's a couple things that worry me about uh, bringing animals onto a rented farm. Um, for one, most of you guys know that have cattle. Cattle are very hard on buildings. Cattle are rough. <laughs> Cattle are... Uh, this, this place has been cleaned up and, and there have been no animals here now for... Um, well, since the 90s, and there hasn't been the cattle uh, on the farm. Um, the fields, have, the pasture has recovered. It used to be pretty muddy and uh, scrappy looking uh, when the cows were here just because of how muddy it was. I've had guys tell me stories about how it used to look here with it being so wet. Um, manure splattered up the walls. Uh, cows uh, are hard on some of these posts in here are rotted off. And if you get two uh, cows fighting or something, it could easily knock one of the posts off. Um, but anyway, when I say money, it's more or less being a tenant. It's hard for me to spend a whole lot of money on facilities um, when they're not quite uh, set up for it. Uh, this has to stay a machine shed. It uh, just has to because I don't have any other place to store my equipment. I'm not going to park my equipment outside so I can put cattle in here. I don't want to split the building and put half equipment, half cattle um, because it's still going to be kind of a mess. So for one, I don't have a place to store my equipment. I think I've gone over this before. The second thing is a fence for pasture. Um, this, this field here would make the most sense to become a pasture. And putting up an electric fence that you can trust, um, there is some major highways <laughs> not too far from here. So I don't want any type of uh, escapes from cattle. I'd like to have a nice fence that uh, is gonna be pretty solid and not have to worry so much an electric fence. And to put up a fence around this field, it's like five acres and then out through be probably be another five acres and all the way out to where I can't farm or has been too wet and steep there's probably another five acres so you have a 15 acre pasture and I didn't calculate what a fence would cost um, but that's another another big concern I have there's no pasture here and it would cost pretty much money uh, being a tenant putting up a pasture so that's uh, kind of number one is the money aspect of it and number two is kind of the uh, the the it's damaged under the buildings over time with cattle. Okay, so concern number three, it still ties into money. That's the well house that used to feed the, the dairy barn and the milk cows. Um, the more I've been working at that project and looking at it and talking to different guys, I'm pretty sure that that well's gonna need a new well pump. So it's gonna involve pulling out the uh, pulling out the pump and all the piping and installing a new well pump. We need a new line from there to the barn here because that line has was uh, ruptured under the ground. So it's gonna involve digging, uh, digging uh, a, a trench three foot down or more to the building here uh, once the new water line is run there is that concrete 
uh, uh, structure, that little concrete block there that the water sat on, that's no good. You need all new plumbing and a new waterer uh, installed on there. Just rough guess, it'd probably be in the five, six, seven thousands just to do all that. <laughs> if I'd have it higher done, uh, if I do it myself, I could probably get away a little bit cheaper, but uh, then you also need new electric run to it because the electric, I, I explained that in past videos. So you've got uh, no fence. Uh, for pasture. Uh, the facilities aren't, <laughs> you'd still need to do some updating to this building to get it ready again for cattle. Um, I've been toying around with the bank barn using that because that's not being used and that still needs a lot of work. So um, <laughs> there's a lot of money that would have to be put into raising some steers and uh, basically would come out of my income for the farming operation which is fine but again being a tenant that's something that that's a road I've already gone down over at my dad's place um, and I, I just don't want a history to repeat itself just right away especially when we had a tough year a uh, tough year like this isn't the time to be expanding it's, it's definitely not um, so we're not going to be making any uh, expansion efforts but again um, a, 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 a farm without cattle versus a farm with cattle um, to non-farmers is uh, a night and day difference as far as uh, any type of damage done to the buildings or just the overall way the farm is. Um, but anyway, so we got water, we need a fence, uh, feed storage, of course, is another issue. Uh, probably like a lot of guys were saying, ag bags would be the best. Um, Another problem that I'd run into with, uh, like, let's say, chopping silage and, and uh, ag bagging it is I have to give up some of my row crop acres to um, make feed for the cattle. Yeah, I can feed hay, I can feed corn. Uh, corn silage is still a safe bet to, uh, to feed the steers. And I don't really want to give up any more row crop acres. Um, <laughs> to go to feed cattle yeah it is a different source of income you'll get that money back but until i have a little bit more land um, i just can't see that happening at the moment so it's just not going to work out on paper uh, the way i need it to so a couple of things there uh see if i have anything else all right so we're back here in the old dairy barn um anyway like i said uh, i had thoughts uh well first of all like i said about being a tenant um i <laughs> Being a tenant, I want to be a good tenant. I do not want to break things or have things break uh, as best I can help it. Uh, I want to be able to take care of this place uh, as if I owned it, basically. Uh, it's, it comes from the school of thought, leave things better than when you found them. Um, that is kind of the way I, I think about uh, things. And uh, uh, so far, um, I haven't, I have done some repairs here or there to the buildings, but right now my focus has been on the, uh, the fields and trying to get the fields in a lot better shape than when I found them. And, and, and that's not to discur that's not to discredit what, uh, guys have done in the past. Uh, two other farmers farmed this place since I took over, uh, from the original operation. Um, those guys did a great job in their day and, uh, all the way up until they quit, but, um, different farming practices they were using, uh, different ways of doing things. And, uh, um, I'm trying to <laughs> correct some of that. Like it, erosion is the biggest problem here, erosion. And, uh, it's not just me saying that or, uh, beating my own drum here with that. Um, I've had, uh, two different agronomists here that were looking at some of the bad spots here on the farm. And like I say, they come up, it all, it all comes down to the same thing. It's erosion issues from the tillage on hard hills. So, um, I'm trying to improve the soil so that way the crops are better. We can get a better crop and it's a more profitable way to do things. But anyway, um, that's not what I want to talk about anyway. So, uh, as far as the cattle, I did have thoughts already of possibly, uh, if I would be farming over at my dad's again, um, having the uh, cattle feeding operation over there at dad's place, uh, because for one, you have more, uh, acreage and uh, can grow more feed for the cattle. Um, there are fields over there that, uh, would be suitable for pasture, at least two. Um, and there's a barn for storage. Uh, the, the, the housing for the cattle is a little tough over there. Uh, there's like a, a shed that I used for equipment that could be used as a, like a run-in shed. And, uh, there is the uh, bottom of the barn that was the old dairy barn and, uh, probably would be a little easier to put a fence, uh, pay for a fence and put it on dad's property. But still, um, 
again, I'm coming back to the same old thing. It's it's not mine. Uh, Dad has his own thing going on over there. Uh, he has the barn occupied. He has the uh, sheds occupied. The barn is occupied. And the fields that were pasture, he is growing uh, vegetables to sell. So um, it, it's a whole nother... <laughs> there's challenges here and there's challenges over there. It's a whole nother thing over there. We have the same issue with water. Now there is a well at the barn, but again, it needs a well pump. It needs plumbing. It needs the piping. Um, it's just kind of where I am. I'm caught in this, uh, <laughs> the same deal of these old farms. Um, it's kind of the same story at my grand, at my dad's place as it was here with uh, the farmer dying. Uh, well, my grandfather was young. This guy was here was fairly young. And the place uh, sitting for so many years, um, unoccupied and un unused. I mean, when the cows left this barn, there was nothing. Uh, the barn wasn't used for anything for all those years. Um, like I say, the guy had steers here for a while. And uh, that was the end of that. So it's just kind of the... <laughs> I don't have any facilities that are, here you go, just, uh, it's turnkey, your cows are, you can bring your cows, but, and, and that's true for a lot of guys. There's a lot of guys that uh, have started and are wanting to do more and expand and trying to make the older facilities match what they're trying to do. Uh, it does take a lot of money. And, uh, so anyway, guys, that's a long way to say why I don't have any cattle yet. Um, I was really hoping that this year would have been a good harvest. Like I said, in July, I was counting on 200 bushel of the acre on the corn. It looked amazing. I thought for sure we were going to do it. And the year just totally uh, took a nosedive. And uh, it's not a good idea to expand on down years. Uh, it definitely isn't. So... Um, and that's not to say it, uh, it would never happen. Like I say, most of you guys that are farmers know all well that all it takes is a year of uh, really good prices. Um, I was through that. I was, like I said, when I was at my dad's farm, farming row crops, uh, that was the year we hit $8 corn. And uh, for even that scale, I was on the small scale. I could do a little bit more. So it is what it is. So I don't think we're going to see any cattle here just yet. Uh, still have to figure a lot of things out. Um, it, it's a lot of the uh, facilities and uh, it, it can be tough being a tenant but uh, then again if you think like I do nobody really owns anything in the <laughs> in this world so it is what it is but like I say I'm trying to uh, do things as best I can here um, and I just don't think that this year is going to be the year to uh, do any type of expanding so uh, it's going to be a year of uh, just kind of economy trying to watch every little penny it's not very exciting for YouTube videos but it is the reality of uh, what I have going right now so all right guys thanks for watching I'll come back with you uh, on Monday and hopefully we can start getting some work done again.